Look, when it comes to luck, it can be a bountiful thing or a fleeting thing. Until both today and yesterday. There are times when we all swear that there's a wealth of good luck going on in our lives, and then there are ones when we're having no good of a very bad day at all. You just want to curl up in your bed and cry for days on end. From a guy who got hit by a meteorite to one that's not selling things at the right time, here's 20 people who prove that bad luck is a real thing. Number 20. Hit by Meteorite There are times in life when you honestly have to wonder if there's a higher power going on in terms of what happens to you, and for the woman known as Ann Hodges, she definitely was wondering that right when she got seriously injured, and that injury was caused by her getting hit by a meteorite. This happened in 1954 in the southern state of Alabama, and it was a situation that no one, especially not Anne, could have ever predicted. Because she wasn't doing anything bad or menacing, she was just taking a nap. She was covered in quilts when all of a sudden a meteorite apparently shot through the roof of her home, deflected off of a nearby radio, and then hit her in the leg, causing it to bruise heavily. One has to really wonder what would have happened to her leg had the quilts not been there. Not only was it a stroke of bad luck, but it was bad luck on a cosmic scale. Think about it like this. Meteorites exist because of larger rocks that dissolve in the Earth's atmosphere as they approach the planet. These are the fragments that remain, but they usually don't hit someone. They either burn up, land in the water, or just go on unnoticed. And yet this one, it not only stayed intact, but found its way to Alabama, went in, broke into Anne's house, and then hit another object before taking out her leg. That's a rock that's on a mission. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. And now it's time for the fancy topic. For this fancy topic, we're going to look at a picture to try to figure out what happened that caused this kind of bad luck. First and foremost, it's a pretty bad wreck. Not only is the front totaled, but if you look at the front right wheel, it's completely damaged and the frame is probably totaled as well. However, if you look at the people in the picture, it seems as though the two officers, who are likely Russian, are taking a man away, which probably means that someone went for a joyride and ended up in the wall. That's going to cost them either way. As always, comment down below using the hashtag FancyTopic and let us know what you think. And now, on to the next stroke of bad luck. Number 19. Could have been richer. There are many moments in history where, in that time and space, people didn't really think that something big was about to happen, or perhaps they had the opportunity to invest in something potentially huge, but then backed out because it didn't feel like it would work. And then it ends up working. When it did, everyone who was part of it was straight up rich and powerful, and those who didn't take the opportunity were left wondering, why didn't I go through with that? For Ron Wayne, his story is slightly like that, but not exactly in the way that you'd be thinking. Once upon a time, Ron was the co-founder of Apple. Many people forgot that due to the popularity Steve Jobs had when he was alive. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak partnered with Wayne in order to create Apple, and in the original agreement, Jobs and Wozniak would get a 45% share of the company, with Wayne getting a measly 10. Given Wayne's skill set, he was just fine with that. But then what happened? Well, it's simple. Wayne could see that Steve Jobs was a bit hard to work with, and so he sold off his shares of the company for just $800. If he had actually stayed with Apple, today he would likely be worth, oh, a small $94 billion. That's a whole lot of money, but the irony of it all, he doesn't mind that he lost out on it. Number 18. Sutomu Yamaguchi 
This is the tale of Sutomu Yamaguchi, who without a doubt is one of the most unlucky men in the history of the world for one very basic reason. He survived a near-death experience just to have one happen to him again the next day. What did he survive twice? The atomic bomb. You remember those, right? Back in World War II, when the United States was so desperate to defeat Japan without having to invade the main island that they just decided to drop two atomic bombs, a first in the history of warfare, all to try and force their hand. Well, Mr. Yamaguchi was in Hiroshima on a business trip, of all things, when suddenly the first atomic bomb would fall and blew away much of the city. He was able to see the bomb drop and dove into a ditch, but the power of it literally sucked him out of the ditch and threw him into a potato patch. His tail was only halfway done at that point, because despite being injured, he actually went back to work the next day in Nagasaki. That's when he actually explained the bomb to his superiors when the second one dropped. He was actually scared at that point because he thought that the mushroom cloud had actually followed him from Hiroshima. He got bombed twice and survived both times. And then he went on to live to be 95 years old. Number 17, Pete Best. If you look through the world of music, there have been plenty of people who have been dubbed unlucky. People were unlucky due to bad deals or bad management, but there were also those who had one mega hit song and were never able to recreate that magic again. Oh, and then there's Pete Best, who has been literally dubbed the most unlucky man in music. But why is that? Well, he was supposed to be one of the original members of the Beatles, and even worked with them up until 1962 as their drummer. But then he was dropped. Love Me Do became a hit, and they became stars, but Best did not. However, if you rewind the story a little bit, it actually begins in the 1950s when he met the Beatles, and then they were just the Quarrymen. At that point in time, the group wasn't the rock-solid foundation that we would eventually know, and you could say they needed help because they had a Rolodex of people going in and out as they tried to figure things out. Eventually though, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Pete Best were the core four, but ironically it was Best as the drummer that they found their legendary sound and style with. However, it wasn't to last, because just weeks before they were about to become legends, Best was dropped, and Ringo Starr would be brought in, and the rest is music history. And for Best, it was bad luck at its worst. Number 16. The Unluckiest Woman Unlike our last entry, who was in for bad luck in a certain industry, I'll now take a look at a woman who honestly has had bad luck in terms of her entire life. Because it keeps happening to her no matter what. Melanie Martinez is the person I'm talking about. And you might be thinking, what could she possibly have done to be given that title? Well, she's someone who has lost a series of five homes, and all of them were due to hurricanes. And trust me when I say this, it goes a bit deeper than that. Martinez lost four homes in the last 50 years via Hurricane Betsy in 1965, Hurricane Juan in 85, Hurricane George in 98, and then of course Hurricane Katrina in 2005. But that's where this unlucky story takes two turns that make it even more sad. Because after Katrina, her story got out about how she'd lost all of those homes to all of those hurricanes, and that's when a reality show on the A&E network would come in to help her out, using $20,000 to do a makeover for her home just so she could have a good place to live. But then in 2012, Hurricane Isaac would come along, and that home would be swept away. There are honestly no truer words here, because having suffered from one hurricane is bad enough, but five of them, and each one taking your home away from you, that's just terrible. And no doubt, she probably clinches up every time it begins to rain. Number 15, Frayne Salak. 
Now, while it may not be the easiest name to pronounce, and I'm sure you'll let me know if I pronounce it incorrectly in the comments, Frayn Salak is someone who honestly does have a place in history. Unfortunately, that's because Frayn is someone who's gone and gotten the title of being the unluckiest man in the world. This man apparently attracts death to him wherever he goes, because throughout his life, he has defied death seven different times. It all began when he was 32 years old, when he was on a train, and a fault in the line would cause it to derail, and as a result, 17 people died. The only reason that he survived was that someone was able to get him out of there, but not before breaking an arm and suffering from hypothermia. Oh, and if you think that was the worst of it, <laughs> it hardly is. Later on, he had to take a plane to go and see his mother, who was very ill. He was able to sit with the flight attendants, and that's when the plane decided to break and crash. Frayn was then sucked out of the plane with no parachute and landed on a haystack. You really can't make this stuff up. And these are just two of the accidents that he's had over his lifetime that nearly took his life, but didn't. Because, you know, the first time, that's probably an accident. The second time, well, that's kind of odd, but explainable. But by the time you get to numbers 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, you probably gotta believe you're cursed. And yet, he ended up living until he was in his 90s. What a world. Number 14. Man versus Animals. It's saying something when you go and get attacked by animals, but what it says depends on the situation at hand. If you provoke an animal, you deserve to get attacked, but other times you can get blindsided. Or in the case of Dylan McWilliams, by the age of 20, you'll find out that animals really just want to attack you for one reason or another. The first of these incidents was one that was honestly a bit understandable. Dylan was out hiking when all of a sudden he kicked what he thought was a cactus and instead it ended up being a rattlesnake. As you can probably guess, it bit him. He was able to be okay though and was able to get back to his outdoorsman ways, but then he went and found himself getting attacked by a bear. And not just attacked, but actually mauled. He literally had gotten his head bitten by the bear, and it's a miracle that he even survived. I don't even know how he survived, and there are pictures to prove that it happened. But then, as if all of that wasn't enough, he eventually went surfing and found himself being attacked by a shark. Presumably a tiger shark, based on the account. He was fine though, and even said that he wanted to get back out in the water. He was 20 by the time that all of these events happened, and one has to wonder what'll happen by the time he turns 30. Number 13. Stop. News reporters, they don't always get a lot of love, and not the least of which is because at times they're told to do reports in places that quite honestly are scrub work. But they do it anyways because they love their jobs. Oh, and they need the money. A great example can be found with this clip of a news reporter in Ireland having to brave a storm in order to go and report to the main station. But as you can see, it really is gusting out there, and many agree that the reporter was likely there. But what really got this clip trending was that out of nowhere, a stop sign hit her right in the face. In Salt Hill, both today and yesterday. It's got to be so trending that people honestly wondered if it was real or not. It wasn't, but it's fun to look at. There are plenty of reasons why. First and foremost, if it was a gale force wind out there, you likely would have heard it more in the microphone. Secondly, when the stop sign hits her, it doesn't make a sound, yet you can perfectly hear it clanging on the ground. It's a literal piece of fake news, but I'm sure that something like this has happened out there in the world at some point in time. Number 12. Violet Jessup Depending on how well you know your history, you'll know the name Violet Jessup. That's because she's a woman who was known as Miss Unsinkable for reasons that still boggle the mind. She went and boarded three different vessels that all happened to be sister ships, meaning that they were made by the same builders one after another, and they all sank in a catastrophic event, but she lived. That really happened. And you'll likely know the three ships that she survived, or at the very least, the most famous one. 
First up was the Olympic, which was doing well in 1911 when it went and crashed into another ship and sank them both. However, she survived. Upon her next excursion was the infamous Titanic, the unsinkable ship. But she was there in 1912 when it hit that iceberg and then plunged into the depths. She was able to get on a lifeboat and was saved by one of the rescue ships. Finally, she was working as a stewardess on the Britannic in World War I when it hit a mine while in the water, causing the boat to sink. A tragic event, but she was able to make it out alive from that one. So yes, she survived all of that, and one has to wonder who she actually ticked off to be on all of those ships that sank. You also have to wonder if it was really bad luck or just good fortune. Number 11. Roy Sullivan There's a phrase in the world that's meant to be taken almost literally. Lightning doesn't strike twice in the same spot. And while many use it for various things in terms of speeches and talks, it's honestly meant to be about literal lightning and not striking the same spot twice. That is unless that spot is Roy Sullivan, in which case it strikes way more than twice. Now if you don't understand, I'm going to explain, because Roy Sullivan is a man who quite literally has been struck by lightning seven times and he's still alive. And I'll be clear here, it wasn't a case where he was holding a piece of metal and it struck him over and over again. This was over the course of 35 years in a variety of situations. He was struck outside of a ranger station, inside of his truck, and even more. One time, and I'm not kidding here, he was even struck by lightning on a boat, then made his way to shore and found himself staring down a bear. And you thought that you had bad luck. Number 10. Moran Karimi Nasiri Movies have a way of making an enchanting view out of stories that are real, mainly because they're trying to get you to feel something. And if you know the movie The Terminal, starring Tom Hanks, you likely remember the story of a guy who was stuck at a terminal for many years and made all kinds of friends and connections as a result. Well, the story's a bit more of a bad luck tale than that, and it stars a very real man named Moran Karimi Nasiri. He was forced to stay at the Paris Charles de Gaulle airport for 18 years. That's right, he stayed in that airport for almost two full decades. But how could such a thing happen? Well, it turns out that he was an activist who spoke out against the ruler of Iran for his various methods, and eventually he'd be given a letter of banishment and had to leave his country. He would be advised by the United Nations to go and seek asylum in England, but the problem was that he detoured and went to Paris, France, and then lost a letter that was required for him to leave. As a result of his bad luck, he would be stuck there on international soil, meaning the airport, for 18 years. Number 9. Boy Punches Painting There are times when parents wonder, why did I even have children? And this is absolutely going to be one of those stories. You see, a young boy and his classmates were being given a tour of an exhibition that featured many special famous paintings. His group was specifically being shown the artwork of Leonardo da Vinci. He was admiring a Baroque painting with his classmates when they leave and then he goes towards them but pauses and looks back. When he does, he accidentally loses his balance and punches a hole through a painting with a soft drink that he had in his hand at the time. That painting? Well, it was just worth a measly one and a half million dollars. I'm pretty sure the kid couldn't pay for it and to be clear, there is footage that shows that he was just someone who had some bad luck and then destroyed a really expensive painting. Not that this is going to be any comfort to him for the simple reason that you know him and his parents are going to be ridiculed for it for the rest of their lives. Number 8. Left Out I want you to picture a group of people, and you're in that group of people. And then one day, a blessing comes upon every single one of you. Well, every single one but you, I should say. How would you feel about that? You'd probably feel pretty unlucky. Well, sadly, something very similar happened to Costas Mitsotakis. Costas was one of many people who lived in a small village in Spain, and Spain as a country had a certain lottery tradition near the Christmas holiday. It's called El Gordo, and it's a 
special lottery that most participate in, including Costas himself. Every single member of the village would be approached by a homemakers association and then sold tickets. Sure enough, they won. In fact, they won $950 million, a literal fortune for an entire village. All of them won, that is, except for Costas, because he didn't have a ticket, and thus he didn't win any of the money. But how is it possible when they were sold to the entire village? Well, the people who sold the tickets, they just forgot to knock on his door. Number 7. Cracking the Windshield and now for a case of not only bad luck, but absolute stupidity. You've probably seen this clip before, depending on how many viral clips that you view on the internet, but it's one that perfectly showcases that people can't be trusted to do, well, anything to be honest with you. At an auto show called Auto Pride in Florida, a man showed up with a $200,000 Lamborghini, which for the record is a very nice brand of car, and I'm honestly a little jealous, just saying. Now, Naturally, I'm not the only one to think this way, as many people would flock to the car to take pictures of it, and the owner was more than happy to oblige. But then he got cocky and thought that his car could withstand anything, so he decided to stand on the hood and put one of his feet on the windshield, and it totally cracked. You can see it happening in real time, but by the time that he realized it, it was too late. Number 6. Bear versus Snowboarder I just want you to picture this. You're going to do some winter relaxing at a ski lodge or a resort. One day you go onto the slopes with your snowboard, which is far superior to skiing, and then you head down the powder. Everything's going very well until you realize there's something behind you. You'd think it would be another person, but it's not. For some reason, there's a bear that's actually chasing you. This really did happen, and there's plenty of footage to showcase the insanity that occurred, because there was a full-on bear that chased a man, and not surprisingly, it actually began to catch up. People tend to forget that bears are fast creatures, and you can see that if something didn't happen, the snowboarder would be toast. Thankfully for him though, he thought fast and threw away his backpack, which then saved his life because the bear ended up going after that instead of him. But why did the bear chase him? What was it doing on that slope? Nobody will ever really know, but that guy had both bad and good luck at the same time. Number 5. Art of Destruction Now they say that kids do the darndest things, and this one you absolutely know the consequences for. Not surprisingly, it involves a piece of art. This time though, the story takes place in Kansas where a local community center was hosting an art exhibition, which is a really cool thing when you think about it. The perfect way to bring the community together and show that appreciation for art that is unless of course you're a five-year-old boy who decides to go and knock over a statue that was on display. Specifically, he would be reaching for the Aphrodite de Kansas City statue that was there and then it tumbles to the ground. But the biggest oops was yet to come, because despite footage that shows that it was a clear accident, the insurance company for the statue stated that his parents were responsible for it, and thus they would be hit with a bill for $132,000. The bill also came with a statement that it was the parents' fault that they couldn't control their child and that they were negligent. Clearly, that insurance person has never had children. Number 4. Highs and Lows Now how about a sports story? That would be a nice change of pace, right? Well in this case we head to the riveting world of cricket. <laughs> no, really. That's actually a riveting sport. Asif Ali and his team would be doing a special event when it was his turn up to bat, and he was able to hit what is referred to as a six in an absolutely beautiful way. The shot was going to help out his team big time. The problem, however, was that while the six was beautiful, it also went deep, but unfortunately a little bit too deep because it ended up in the parking lot and it hit his own car's rear window. That's a perfect shot right there. But to be fair, his team did advance to the next round thanks to the shot, but what are the odds that you would hit the shot and then hit your own car in the parking lot? Number 3. Skydiving Selfie 
Now we're back to stupid human stories, because we can never get tired of those, but this time we're going to the Alps. It doesn't have anything to do with mountain climbing, but rather skydiving. This is a sport that can be intense and heart pounding, and most of all, it's going to test your nerves. But for those who do go and do it, they find themselves in an exhilarating experience that they wish they could capture on their phone. And for one woman, she tried to do just that and failed miserably. She was on her iPhone and even had a selfie stick when she went diving out of the airplane. She would go to take a selfie, but then wanted to change it to video mode in order to capture the moment. And then she dropped it. That's right, she dropped her brand new iPhone 11 and it careened 5,000 feet until it entered a nearby lake. Number two, Eddie Griffin. Car wrecks are usually something you don't go and make fun of because often they can be very terrifying events for those who are involved. But when the person is an idiot and wrecks a supercar that's worth one and a half million dollars, maybe they deserve that ridicule. The man in question was Eddie Griffin, who you might know from the show Big Brother. He was apparently doing a charity event for a film that he was doing called Redline when things went the way of Big Brother. He would be driving an incredibly rare Ferrari Enzo that was worth one and a half million dollars around the track and suddenly he crashed into a concrete barrier. For those of you who aren't familiar in the automotive world, that car is not really something that you can just easily repair or even do it cheaply, especially for a rare model like the Enzo. Eddie Griffin was fine for the record, but the car would be the real victim of the bad luck. Not bad luck that it crashed, but bad luck that it had a big brother as its driver. Number 1. Clearance Issues Depending on the vehicle you drive, you never really have to worry about something like clearance levels, mainly because most cars and vans and trucks are able to go and get under tunnels and low roof areas with ease. However, when it comes to semi-trucks, they're supposed to be mindful of the clearance because if they don't, something like this can happen. One semi-driver decided not to pay attention to the upcoming bridge that had a clearance level of 11 feet and 8 inches. This semi in question was obviously taller than that, but it tried to go through anyways, and chaos would ensue. First, the bed of the truck was wrecked, debris would shoot off in all directions, and just as important, it blocked the road so that people couldn't get past. It took quite a long time for the road to be cleared of the semi, and only good thing about it was, nobody got hurt. That's all for the bad luck that's showering the world. What did you think of these tales of bad luck? Can you believe that this stuff really did happen to people? Let us know all about it in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.